Now then, we've got another exciting issue here with a grid inverter and we've not had one of these before for well, this particular brand and it's a Solis and as you will see as we go through this video it's highly interesting and we've learnt other things about a certain type of relay and there we are it's a 3.6 kilowatt Solis and the software in it looks familiar so let's crack on and let's get the uh, the back off and all you've got to do is undo all these screws in the back and there are four screws that go through that heat sink undo them all the heat sink screws are longer and then the back and the front part but it's got a rubber seal so you have to sort of gently encourage it to uh, to break apart and then there are cables that connect the front and the back so just be careful of what you're doing there so most of them will unplug and I'll describe the uh, the technique with the spade connectors as we crack on So we've got my mate Lee here and this is a Solis inverter yeah, which is supposed to be really quite good uh, but this one doesn't work and I'll show you the label it's a 3.6 kilowatt isn't it? 3.6k 2g Solis inverter 3.6 kilowatt AC output yeah and what's the DC in? The DC in range is 100 volts to 500 volts. Right. Yeah. Anyway, it was started to fire up, but then it didn't come up with an error code. It didn't come up with E031, right? But it was constantly trying to start and then starting and then not starting and look what's here any of you who have seen my aurora videos will notice that those relays look ever so familiar so what we're going to do now is just undo the screws and lift that board off and see if there's the telltale burning sign so we'll just crack on with that but the main thing here is i've never had one of these solace here before and it's quite interesting to see that they still use the same uh, relays. I'll give you a view over the circuit board just a bit later on. Okay, we've disconnected all these. Here we go. So that coil there goes to L1, this coil here goes to L2. But the interesting thing, uh, L3 and L4, but the main thing you've got to be aware of is there's a lock tab on under these under this plastic on these spade connectors. So you've got to you've got to depress the lock tab before you can remove the spade connectors, or you can pull forever and then pull it all apart. You're better off if you can to to remove the plastic, and I'll just zoom down. Can you do that, um, Lee? Lee's got it there. And you see that little log tab? You've got to depress that to lift these spade connectors off. Okay, good. So we found the problem of this one. And Lee's just going to spin the circuit board over. And where are we? There we are. The telltale signs so hopefully we'll get the big soldering iron out and just repair that up if I can see where we are there we are focus that's soldered up and we spread the solder onto cleaned areas of the circuit board and put plenty on there and tried to get it to follow down the um, the, the pin from the relay 
the contact pin but we do our best and we put plenty there so now, now let's just put it back together and give it a road test now then to hugely misquote Hunter S Thompson it was around about Barstow that the full reality kicked in anyway what happened was we'd uh, resoldered that joint and we because of the heat of the moment we were experimenting there's two of us I didn't get all the footage but uh, what happened was it still was going from initializing trying to start coming back round going initializing trying to start and this go anyway so basically the relay with the burnt contact I decided to cut the top off with the Dremel and peel off the remainder of the uh, the case of that relay because they're glued on so you can't re you can't lever them off you've got to cut the top off with the Dremel just cut the corner and work your way in anyway so then it was a matter of realizing that we've got faulty contacts so we'll continue now with the um, checking that the relay is actually or forcing the relay to make contact once the re once the moving coil moving contact has moved over click like that uh, then you've got to make sure that that's those two contacts are pushed hard together if it's only a light touch then uh, what happens is it drops out again so it's got to be a good really quite firm push together contact okay so let's crack on okay we're on wobbly cam and this is looking down in one of those relays now there's the relay arm and it's just clicked over and what I did was I put this there and made sure that that relay was making contact with the pin on the right of where I'm putting this screwdriver so we need to, and then it worked so not only did we have a a burnt relay pin but we've also got some dirty contacts so I'm going to have to um, get in there and clean the contacts between that right hand pin and the moving contact and we've got wobbly cam but I'm lent over so um, and is it working Lee? Yeah 94 watts and now it's right working in. now I'm going to remove this screwdriver and it dropped out so we just need to clean those contacts can we see let me just see if I can zoom in a bit more hopefully you can see that contact there yeah that's on the near the left pin and we need to clean the right hand face of that right Lee's gonna crack on with that because he's got better eyes than I have there we go 870 watts 890 900 it's working Lee is happy nice one So I'm just editing this Solis 3.6 kilowatt in grid inverter fix and I'm sorry that it's a bit disjointed but when Lee was here and we were in the heat of the moment and we were experimenting and of course he's taken it away with him now whereas you would not believe that sometimes when I do one of these videos you know I will be editing and then go ah and I go back and re reshoot some part of the footage yeah, well I can't do that so you're gonna to have to put up with the disjointed nature of some of this video however one of the we've identified one of the major problems is these wee beasties and there is a problem that we can fix that actually has a bit of a cause for these burnt pins and the build up of heat so I'm going to do a separate video about that but uh, there is some of the factors that are covered in a solar river inverter fix 
uh, and that's about the actual contacts on the relays so as I say I'll do a fresh video about that I'll, I'm trying to think now about how to do an experiment with this to show yeah, and, and show the fix at the same time so those of you who've got problems with your solace inverters hopefully you've gained some solace <laughs> from this video yeah and um, gain knowledge uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it also so I will catch up with you very soon cheers for now